Notts County Talk feels a bit weird not making uh, match-related videos, but it gives us a chance to uh, get some other videos out we've been looking forward to. Uh, we put a poll on Twitter what you'd like to see in terms of ranking videos, part three of the players, um, managers, recent managers, uh, or kits. And I think we a lot of people voted for kits and recent managers, so we're starting off with that, aren't we? Yeah. Recent managers. So we've got five categories. Quality, good, average, poor, and embarrassing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the managers, see where we rank them. Yeah. Yeah. Be interesting to see if people agree with us on this one because there's a vast array of managers in this one. There. 100%. And if you if you want a part two of this or anything else you want us to rank, just let us know because we're going to try and provide as much Notts County content um, as we can whilst the season's out, aren't we? Before we get quarantined. Mm. Yeah. Before we get quarantined, we're doing this over Skype. Right, first manager then. We'll go with Paul Ince. <clears throat> I want to get off the bat here. I can't stand him as a man. I think a lot of people say that. Quite arrogantly. When he was at Man U, he was quite arrogant as well. Yeah. I mean, he's last managed Blackpool in 2014. Mm. So clearly he's not a good manager. Yeah. Or he'll say he's made the decision to be out of management. Punditry now, right? He's just... I just cannot get across how much I dislike him as a man. Like, he's so arrogant. And you know, there's these managers where you think to yourself like, oh, I hate him, but I wish he was at my club. Yeah, not this one. Even when he's at knots, mm. I can't say what I want, but absolute fool. No, I, I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, if we look at a, a few facts about him, so two hundred and seventy-three days average time as a manager. <coughs> so he didn't even make a year. He's never made a year at a club. He's been three days off. Mm. But he's never made a year. What does it tell you? Everything you need to know. I think. Um, he left with not two places above the relegation zone. We'd lost five in a row at that point. Um, and to be honest, we had players like Alan Judge. We had St- uh, Stephen Darby on loan. We had Neil Bishop. Did we have Ince as well? His son? I don't know. Pretty sure we did. Uh, I don't think so. I swear we did. Well, either way, both idiots. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope they're not watching. Well, they won't watch our channel, will they? They won't. He- he's too arrogant. He'll only watch high quality content, he'll say. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to. I don't know. I want... you, you can't put him too high. You, 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 you could even put him right at the bottom. I'm going to. Embarrassing. I'm putting him. I'm kicking off with embarrassing. That's so much. This feels like it's. It's got to be reflective of his time at Knots, like not just what I think of him as a person. Yeah, but I think that is reflective. You're going if with you that? Leave, if you're leaving a club near the relegation zone or in the relegation zone I mean you can't really you can't really give him much higher than that in my opinion I'm going to embarrass him yeah, because the players know. he had Alan George and all that he's got to be doing better yeah we'll move on though bit of a more positive one I, think. I need to calm down I'm rotten yeah yeah you do need to calm down actually yeah, you're, rotten. you're spot on uh, so we're going to go on to like I just said probably the most positive one as far as I can remember being a Knotts fan Steve Cottrell mm. go down in history at Knotts he will Definitely. One of the best win percentages I can remember seeing at Knotts. Was it like... I know it wasn't there long. 77%. 77%. You don't get any manager. No. I'm going to be shot down, but I don't even think like... Players like, managers like Alex Ferguson don't get that. No managers get 77%. Mm. But in saying that, he, he'd walked into... It was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? With the mm. whole... Uh, Munto, it was the Munto season, wasn't it? And when it all sort of got shown for what it was, that sort of when he came in, <clears throat> we we had a great team, didn't we? Obviously, mm. we had Schmeichel, Hughes got like thirty plus goals that season, so it it wasn't like it was hard for him. But at the end of the day, you you still got to sew the sew the parts together You've to got make a it work. A, a mess of a of exactly, what was going yeah, on. yeah, exactly. Um, only if you look, first game five 0 win, yeah, against Hereford. He got us promoted as well, yeah. And then Portsmouth snatched didn't they? But we, we had a quick <clears> look. So in the 18 games he managed, scored 40. Con- not, not a bad record. Conceded six. Conceded one every three games and scoring for fun. That's when it was like every week you're going into a game thinking, how many are we going to win by? Yeah, yeah. You don't get that often as a Knots fan. No. Un- unbelievable. Yeah. Um, unbelievable. Where's he going? As much as we've just you know praised him to the ground I think he was only there for what was it like 18 18 games he's got to go in quality please yeah he's got he's he's done unbelievable things there I think I know what you're saying 
but to, to, to score 40 and concede 6 is unreal I know, like, it's, it's not, it's you not... remember how gutting it was when you left though I know but like, you'd just been promoted with not got the record you have and then just because a new club will come into it he's gone but they're a championship club and they're Portsmouth I don't know what are we saying I'll, I'll, I don't know I, I you personally think good because for, for me I think I think you don't go into a manager at Jerry role I think in the lower leagues especially to work there for one or two years you want longevity I think so you, in, you, in every way I'll let you make the call I'm going good George has said good shoot me down shoot him down shoot me down right blast from the past the Icelandic man good John Thorderson 2005 he came in <coughs> managed his national team when have not sad a coach that's managed a national team prolific national team at that they are now that's he's sown the seeds <laughs> um, Stoke Barnsley he's got Stoke promoted into the championship he's come in thinking what a manager we're going to have now this is this is early days of of me remembering being a Knots fan like this is pushing it back but <clears throat> he's come in and you've got a lot to expect from him mm-hmm. and he's won 13 out of 50 that's a big disappointment <laughs> you face said it all um, I don't know I think it, I was well excited to have an Icelandic manager because like Iceland are a, a, bit, a name in football now aren't they they were nothing before mm. it's like you had a good Johnson and that was it Rubbish now. <laughs> He's got to go in poor, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Poor. I don't think you can really give him much more than poor. No. Nah. I think when you have high expectations for someone as well and they don't quite cut the mustard, it makes it a bit worse. But yeah, yeah poor. Definitely. Uh, we'll move on. This is this is a massive talking point because it's quite recent. Well, it's very recent. So, Harry Kuehl. Yeah. Uh, you can sort of imagine people watching the video now going, oh, God Yeah, you can. Um, just what the hell why did he come to Notts that's obvious isn't it well yeah it is obvious but the old uh, the old chairman what was he thinking we won't mention any names because we don't want to on the channel anymore um, but obviously he was a Liverpool fan wasn't he and it was his dream to bring in an ex-Liverpool star to the club that he owns to manage but gee like he was at Crawley I bet the shortlist was like Harry Kewell, Michael Owen, John Onorisa, <laughs> Josie do that. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard just missed it, missed it to uh, Rangers. I mean, he came in, didn't he? I remember Crawley fans <clears throat> saying like, he, he literally left Crawley and he was like nearly fighting the fans going down the tunnel. <laughs> so that is a man you want to put with the manager yeah, of the team. That they is, said yeah. he, they said he tries to pass it out from the back. I remember this. This Crawley fan said he, they they tried to pass it out from the back. <laughs> They get to midfield and they get stuck and pass it back. <laughs> it was so boring to watch, wasn't it? But um, on the flip side, one positive, he bought in Enzio. Yeah. So for that, you think of what I'm thinking. Average. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking don't put him in embarrassing. <laughs> no, he's, he's bought in Enzio. <clears throat> and I, I, I really, really, I mean, as much as it was such a weird appointment, everyone was sort of thinking, for God's sake, but... You, you also you can't be too harsh on someone that's walked into an absolute ticking time bomb like he did I don't think anyone could have walked into there and done a job but for the man be- that he is is it for me anyway is it another one of the arrogant ones <clears throat> yeah he's, he's, he's post my horrible to listen to um, yeah. I don't know where do you think poor average Poor. Well, yeah. we'll go poor. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. Poor. I was just agreeing with you. We'll go poor. Next one. Martin Allen. Mad dog. One of my favourites, purely for that. He was nuts on it. You base your life off him, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You so always I say. Same diet and everything, yeah. <laughs> you always say. Same like, Every time we're about to film, don't you? You'd smack yourself in the head and say, I'm going to be a mad dog today. No. But, um, yeah, what, what, one of my favourites, actually. Um, uh, I agree with a lot of his philosophies. Especially his nickname, Mad Dog. Mm. Um, <clears throat> just, just a nut one, he really. Even yeah. the way he got sacked was mad. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent. Well, I'm saying ninety nine point nine percent certain that they were, it was at an away game. He got sacked and he wasn't Hard allowed. Ball, I think. Yeah, and he wasn't allowed to come back on the on the coach. Like, what? He probably sprint back past the coach. <laughs> yeah, literally, like. literally swearing at the coach. Um, I mean, it was a shock when he was sacked. Yeah, yeah, it was. Was a shock, but then you look at it and he won. Thir- he won uh, sixteen out of forty-three. 
and lost 17. It's That is bang average. It is bang average. But I think he was a bit of a fan favourite, you know? He doesn't go in the same category as Cottrell. No, 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 no. No, no way. I think it's more of a personal thing for me. It wasn't maybe so much of his football and managerial mind. It was a lot of the way he conducted himself in post matches and stuff like that. Quite a character. But yeah, I'm saying average. Average, agreed. Martin Allen average. <clears throat> right, we'll go on to big fan favourite, Sean Derry. Yeah. 2013, he came in. Um, yeah, League One survival. I think he, he a, a, Notts fans have got a, a soft spot for him. And mm. I think he has a soft spot for Notts as well. He was quite vocal in the, uh, the back end of last season talking about what was going on at Notts. And, you know, he didn't have to do that. I think fair play to him for someone that's in the industry to be talking about what people are sort of scared to talk about. I thought that was brave of him. He, um, no matter what league you're in, if you're fighting relegation and you win six of your last nine to stay up, that's 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 really good, isn't it? That really is good. good. Um, and then obviously we're sacked the following year with not one place above the relegation zone. I think it was on goal difference. And we <coughs> won, won three out of 24. So it went massively downhill. I think good though. To win six of the last nine and keep Notts up. Just it gave Notts fans another season in that league. I know it wasn't a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going good. That's a, that's a huge achievement to win six from nine. In the you're in the thick of it really. It shows mm. grit. So yeah, I, I give him good for the for different reasons. Obviously to Cottrell. Yeah. Next one. Um, who was the next one? Kevin Nolan. I liked him. Controversial, yeah. I liked him. I think we said it just before we started uh, recording because it was obviously flicking through the managers. It it shows you how good of a sort of manager, coach that he is that he went from managing League 2 in Notts County and now he's like one of the head coaches at West Ham in the Prem. Mm. So, <clears throat> obviously he's got ties with West Ham and that. But they're not just going to appoint any old ex-player. No. So. Um, I mean, we got him off the back of, I think, 15 games he managed at Leighton Orient. So to get someone off the back of 15 games, I feel like it was a... Uh, I don't know. You never know how it was going to work. Yeah. But look at that. So 41% win rate. Decent. That's pretty good. Mm. You win him four out of ten. And especially when he came in and the club work were in... Yeah. Pretty bad way, weren't we? Um he inherited a team from Sheridan I think that had lost 10 straight games and then do you remember he got the 0-0 against Mansfield to start it 10 10 straight losses and he's come in and he's he's kept knots up and then what what he's done the season after with the playoffs yeah he was uh, he was on one of the the talk shows was it like Paddy Power yeah it was with like that woman presenter I can't remember what she scored but yeah no he, he was talking about I think it was against I can't remember what team it was against but it was an away game anyway and it was like one in the morning and they all got off the coach and were ready to go and he pulled him in because we'd lost I think it was three but no we lost by like one goal in the, the final minute and he was tearing into him it, like the love and passion he had for the game it, it shone through didn't it really mm. so uh, another fan favourite <clears throat> was his uh, was his departure premature yeah I think so I don't know it was starting to feel like... I'd like to have seen him giving the games that Q was given. Where's your defenders? <laughs> yeah, and he had this lawyer to Duffy, didn't he? Which, I think he was also sold on by the owner. He was told he'd be he'd have that assurances and then he well, was... Well, the owner was telling him he'd be the England manager in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> he was really sold on there, I think. Uh, I think he got mixed up because I think he thought he played for Liverpool. But... <laughs> <laughs> Loved the big name, didn't he? Um yeah <clears throat> so where's he going um, I don't know tough one for me it's good yeah I'm he gonna get go that season where if the ref and linesman had had the specs on against Coventry who knows he could even still be the manager now if it had all gone yeah 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 it's just heartbreaking to even think of that I don't even want to think of the Coventry semi-finals but I think good agreed yeah I'll agree with you on that one right solid for definitely me. good Right, An- another one. Let's let's move on. Let's go to this one. This one. Yeah. Let's go. Billy Dearden, two thousand and two. Now this is this is going back. Would have been young. 
we've had to to enlist a bit of the help of our older fans, haven't we, for for this just just to give a bit of input. But <coughs> just about remember Billy Deard in two thousand and two. So he comes in in January, not brink of relegation, pretty much, um, and then gets sixteen points in March and wins Manager of the Month. Sixteen points in a month. Let's say they've played seven games, maybe eight. And to pick up 16 as a poor team in the relegation zone is amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, amazing thing I actually found out later on because he, he did save knots after winning eight of the last 11. So we praised Derry on six of the last nine. He's won eight of the last 11. And he actually holds the record for being the longest serving manager at a club in administration. So no manager has managed a team in administration for longer than Billy Dearden. Strange one, that, isn't it? Yeah. You don't know whether to applaud him or but he's kept, ask him why. But he's kept knots up. Yeah, Eight from play, 11. Um, unreal. For me, he goes in quality. I'd also read that he'd had no... He couldn't sign one permanent player. Yeah. That's incredible. From from the things, obviously, that we've researched into this one, because I'm not going to lie, I was six. These aren't things that I was remembering in my head thinking, Jesus, the club are in administration. It's more remembering my dad talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, obviously, our parents and the older fans talk about stuff like that and the stuff that we've researched, it's, it's obviously very impressive. You know, the mm. stat where you say, um, longest serving manager of a club and administration. Unreal. That shows such... Um, that's admirable, really, isn't it? Yeah, that must have been tough. So, quality. It's got to be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think he's the first one in there. Yeah, definitely. Is. Right, next one. Ricardo Moniz. What an individual. Odd one. Odd one. Odd one. I don't know. People love him, people don't like him. Right. He's a knots manager and he'd managed he's managed teams like Red Bull Salzburg. He's not done brilliantly at knots. He's ended <coughs> up at Trechin in Slovakia and he's gone and beaten final over two legs. And I'd seen at that point Trechin's whole budget for their like weekly wages and everything was two million. Fine odds was seventy million. He's gone and beaten them over two legs, so it's not a fluke, and got them close to Europe. Saying that, it was it was nuts time at Knotts on it. Was it twenty players he signed? It was 20, 20 players, I think. I think it was something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we were talking about him a few weeks ago, weren't we? And you said off the back of it, we did get John Stead out that time that he was there and Elliot Hewitt but look at some of the names you got Gil Swartz Kyle De Silva Gennaro Schneiders who actually uh, wasn't his signing which we're surprised about weren't we Stanley Abora Sivard Sprockle and Isla McLeod the club Siv- Sivard Sprockle rings a bell terrible yeah. oil tanker we put him in the uh, embarrassing he was the only player to go and embarrass him yeah in our last uh, picks Moni's crazy crazy times I think the size of the squad he had what must it have been he must have been 36 players massive squad huge squad um, <clears throat> but he's obviously had something about him obviously had something about him that he got these players he loves he, he loves players and he? he takes them wherever he goes I think he, he signed Sprockle for FC Eindhoven when he went there it's like loyalty to players I don't, I don't personally think necessarily works no um, and I don't think it worked at Notts. There were some good times, there were some bad times. Average? Yeah, very. I think some people will say good. Mediocre spell. He had players like, he had play, he bought players in like a Bora, who was like, just stood in front of the defence and passed it forward and it was unreal to watch on form, but I don't know. Average, definitely. Yeah. Whoa. We've thrown a spanner, haven't we, in the works here? Yeah, this is really going to divide fans as it has done for the last, must be six, seven months now. Who is it, George? That's longer than that, isn't it? Who is it? Mm. Neil Ardley. Oh, Neil Ardley. We've n- we rarely put a current player or manager in. Um, I'll take the lead on this one. I've got some strong opinions on this one because <clears throat> there's obviously it, it splits a lot of fans on it this one mm. so you've got the oddly in and the oddly out the, he took us down which is one of the oddly out points but you look oh, I just you don't know where to start with him he's walked into literally a ticking time bomb 
like Harry Kuhl had it bad, but you've got to think Audley had it off the back of Nolan and Kuhl, where they both brought players in. There was divides in the, the camp, you know, players were picking up niggles before games. Yeah, not wanting to just play. not wanting to play, which is crazy to me. Um and but f- f- to come from where he came in, it was like the back end of two thousand and eighteen. Um to where we are now, what's that like a year and a bit later? Unbelievable. I, I mean, fair enough we've been relegated. To to me it was bound to happen anyway. Yeah. You can say, Oh, if if he stayed we wouldn't we, we wouldn't have gone down, but it doesn't matter because that didn't happen. He showed loyalty. You know, I think him and Coxie, they've really got the team playing now. Yeah. We're third in the National League. Now, you look across forums, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything. All Knots fans said, if we finish mid-table this season, you know, we've done well. I mean, for me personally, I think that's a bit of an underachievement. You know, if, if we gained a bit of stability, you want to be pushing for playoffs. But that's me. But we are. We're, mm. we're third. We want to stay in and around that. Hopefully, you know, when the season does continue, we'll continue the run that we are on, you know, the unbeaten run. We've won our last, what was it, five, six games? Yeah, crazy. The guys don't. What a roller coaster. The guy had to get seven new signings two days before, well, less than 48 hours before the season started. Yeah, it literally, one thing after another when he came in. We've talked about press conferences with managers like Ince and Kuehl. All his press conferences are so level-headed, so good. Yeah, I don't know. You can you can be as media trained as you want, but the pressure he's been under the whole, his whole time at Knotts is starting to tail off a little bit now, obviously because he's getting results. Um, Crazy. The way he holds it together and the way he conducts himself is impeccable. I think he's going in quality, isn't he? He is. Yeah. The way he's got the team playing this season, unbelievable. Amazing. I I want him to be long term. I really do. If, yeah. if this season, whatever happens this season. If if we come back and and not tail off for me, it's because part of it is because of the break. Like it's whatever you say about professionals, professionals, it's God mess with your head. And give me give him another go. Like great quality, yeah, yeah, going in there. Right, two to go. Ooh, who we got next? Keith Curl. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Um. He used to. He, he, I think he's been pictured at a few games this season at Knotts, hasn't he? Has it? Yeah, yeah. In the uh, direct area. So, uh, whether it be he's looking at a few players or whether he's got a genuine interest because he lives fairly local, I believe. Um, Not a manager I like when he manages against Knotts. No, he's, he's, he likes the old mind games, doesn't he? Yeah. Loves a good mind game. Keith Kerr does. Um, I don't know, you know. Keith Kerr, he's a good manager. Good shoes. Always got those white pumps on. <laughs> <laughs> good shoes good shoes he stylish man to keep them white he um, does I mean after Notts he went to Carlisle 207 games in the league you don't get 207 games without being a good manager yeah yeah and he was he was good at Notts he was good I mean he won 23 out of 51 games and if, I'm, if I remember right he was the manager that we had the league one at the start of the season with the top for like 6 weeks maybe 5 weeks mm-hmm. that's dreaming yeah. Dreamland mm. um, but he was sacked wasn't he like 2 wins in 10 2 wins in 11 after that I mean, he was sacked 5 points off the playoffs in League 1 put that in context now yeah it's mad mad all these decisions that just sort of come down to where we are now but it's happened what do you think Keith Curl? I don't know I think it's a tough one I thought I thought he was good at Knotts his win percentage was quite good mm. Nearly, Getting, nearly 50% yeah yeah roughly 50% which is decent going in 53 games I think he was a I think he's good games. yeah I'm gonna go good yeah he's, he's doing alright now as well mm. his role at um, Northampton isn't he yeah as well I think he's a manager that likes likes a, a long stay at a club yeah these days 51 games is a long time yeah, yeah. Um, right last one everyone's firm favourite isn't he Jamie Fullerton what a manager I'm surprised he's not the next thing manager <laughs> uh, he, he I actually saw an interview where Pep said he learnt it off him Pep's tic is from Fullerton you'll have to send me that one um, 
I will. I'll try and find it. It might be deleted now, but um, <laughs> he lost us 70 days at Knots and managed three wins in 12. And to be honest, it's a miracle he got three. It's a miracle he got two. It's a miracle he got one. Yeah. Um, I don't even need to say anything else. Embarrassing. Yeah. Um, I think I remember what some of the, reading some of his past interviews. He was well out of depth. <laughs> I mean, I read an interview where he said that there was pressure going into training. <laughs> going into training he said there was pressure I mean you're not cut out for the job are you like <laughs> he said he didn't like the um, like the solitude of the training ground there was like no phones no media and all the pressure was on you I mean you've lost it already yeah you're a manager of a football club <sighs> goodness me and then somehow he goes in 2018-19 season and gets a, the Halifax job I mean Who's who's the point in the team? I mean, chase your dreams, because if if you want to be a football manager, you can. <laughs> yeah, he's proved it. Literally. Um, it, he's going in embarrassing, isn't he? I think any manager that's you know breaking under the pressure <laughs> trip on the training ground <laughs> does not deserve to go in anything above embarrassing. Oh goodness me! I hope uh, that that statement doesn't upset him too much. <laughs> um, we're done. <laughs> We've done them all. Yeah. Hope we weren't too harsh. No. Especially on um Ints. Don't, don't mind that one. <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoy that was that was that was good fun to to record. Um thanks to everyone that voted for this. We will do uh ranking previous kits. Because we we're big into kits, aren't we? Collecting kits. Yep. Um but yeah, if you want to see a part two of this, I mean we've rattled through a lot of the uh, of the main ones, but you've got like Chris Kawamnia, you've got um could even go back as far as Allardyce. Yeah, we didn't do Paul Ince. <laughs> we did Paul Ince, and I'm not talking about him again. <laughs> um, so if you want to see any more, enjoy the video. Give us a like, because uh, it's risky sitting next to George when there's this stuff going around. He's not clean the best of times. So, um, yeah, leave a like. Please subscribe, especially while it's tough for us without the season, and we'll try and bring as much Knox content as possible.